In this video, we're going to explore the chronic condition diabetes and how it's controlled. As always, this video relates to the AQA specification for A2 biology, and we're going to be using the AQA A2 textbook by Glenn and Susan Tool. And the pages you're going to need are 206 to 207. Let's look at our objectives for this video. You're going to be able to differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. You're also going to understand how each of these conditions can be controlled. And then finally, we're going to interpret some graphs showing data from diabetic and non-diabetic individuals. Let's get started. Diabetes is a metabolic condition that's quite common. 1.4 million people in the UK have diabetes, and a further 1 million UK citizens are thought to have the condition, but are not currently aware of it. There are two forms of diabetes that you need to be aware of, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is also known as insulin-dependent diabetes, whereas type 2 is known as insulin-independent diabetes, and the reason for these names will become clear. So let's look at the symptoms of diabetes. We've got high blood glucose levels, glucose in the urine, and both of these symptoms indicate that glucose is not being absorbed into cells correctly. Then we've got increased thirst and hunger, frequent urination, gentle itching, regular episodes of thrush, tiredness, weight loss, and blurred vision. Now we're going to look at the different types of diabetes, starting of course with type 1. People with type 1 diabetes are unable to produce insulin, and that's the hormone that lowers blood glucose levels. This condition often begins in childhood and onset is relatively quick, taking only a matter of weeks. In some cases, the cause of the inability to produce insulin is autoimmune. This is where the immune system attacks the beta cells of the islet of Langerhan, so no insulin can be secreted. Remember how earlier in the video we said that type 1 diabetes was also known as insulin-dependent diabetes? This is because type 1 is controlled by regular insulin injections. The insulin must be injected because it's a protein, so if it was taken orally, it would be digested before it could reach the bloodstream. The amount of insulin that is injected is carefully matched to the glucose intake of the individual. If too much insulin is administered, blood glucose levels would drastically drop, which could result in a loss of consciousness. Let's move on to type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes occurs when receptors on the cell surface membrane become unresponsive to insulin. And this usually develops in adults of 40 years and older. However, more recently, the incidence of type 2 diabetes in children has been increasing. And this is shown in this graph. Lifestyle is closely linked to the development of type 2 diabetes in younger people. Regular consumption of carbohydrate-rich foods or sedentary lifestyle with a lack of regular exercise can contribute. So how is type 2 diabetes controlled? It's important to regulate the amount of carbohydrates that are eaten and also to take regular exercise. Medication can be prescribed to stimulate the production of insulin. Other drugs can also slow the absorption of glucose in the small intestines. Okay, so our final objective was to look at some graphs. What we're going to see are two different line graphs that, show, that relate to the same dependent variable, time. The first graph is going to show how the concentration in blood glucose changes in two people. One is non-diabetic and the other has type 1 diabetes. At one hour on the graph, a glucose meal is ingested. This is usually a sugary drink. So, our non-diabetic person ingests the glucose and we see a rise in his blood glucose concentration for the next half an hour. After this time, the blood glucose drops quickly back to normal levels. This takes about half an hour. Next up is our type 1 diabetic. The glucose meal is taken at the same time. The increase in blood glucose concentration is the same because the same amount of sugary drink is used. We then see that it takes a longer time for the blood glucose level to return to normal. The only process that is using up the glucose is cellular respiration because insulin would control other processes like the formation of glycogen. So let's take a look at the same two people, but this time we're going to look at the changes in their insulin concentration. Notice that there are no units on the y-axis here. This is only showing relative abundance, not actual amounts. The insulin levels of the non-diabetic start to rise as soon as the meal has been ingested. The rise in blood glucose has been detected by the beta cells of the islets of Langerhan, and insulin is secreted. Once the blood glucose level drops, negative feedback ensures that insulin secretion is stopped. 
A type 1 diabetic's insulin level is always low because of the inability to produce insulin. There is no response to raised blood glucose levels. Let's summarise. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 is known as insulin dependent and this is an inability to produce insulin. It develops quickly early in life and is controlled by injections of insulin. Type 2 is known as insulin independent diabetes. It's caused by damage to insulin receptors on cells, and it usually develops around middle age. It's controlled by diet, exercise, and medication. Sedentary, that means lazy, lifestyle, and regular consumption of carbohydrate-dense food are leading to younger people developing type 2 diabetes. Thanks for watching.